Hey, morning. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. So you're actually on the side of the DEFRA building as we speak? Currently, yeah. I'm uh, hanging off the side of the building. Safely, I might add. And what is it that you're actually asking for? Why are you doing this? So we want the government to defund meat. And for us, that means stopping investing or subsidising meat and dairy. Because currently, the UK government gives £1.5 billion per year to prop up the unsustainable and unprofitable meat and dairy industry. And we're asking, in t in in instead of that, they can invest that same money into plant-based alternatives, which have been proven time and time again to be better for the planet, cheaper and better for people's health. So we're saying stop wasting taxpayers' money on this unprofitable industry that's destroying the planet, but move it towards a cleaner and better future. You know that they're doing that, right? I mean, you know that they've got plans to do that by 2028, that the subsidy that farmers are receiving every year are is being phased out so that by 2028, they will be giving the money instead to restore wild habitats, which presumably you're in favour of. Definitely. But the Cre create is new woodlands, hang on, and boost soil and cut pesticide use. So subsidising farmers to just you know farm the land or not farm the land or subsidizing them to come up with ways in which they can increase their meat production the government has already announced in november last year that they're not going to be doing that anymore so that's one part of the puzzle the other part of the puzzle is actually investing in the alternatives so the national food strategy which is the independent advisor to defra they recommended 125 million investment in alternative proteins last year and there's still nothing that defra or the uk government anywhere has announced in actually investing in alternative proteins so it's one thing to actually be cutting down the, the unsustainable investments in meat and dairy, but we want to see what's the, what's the alternative. We want the government to instead invest in these cheaper, more sustainable, less destructive alternatives, such as alternative proteins, to actually displace the meat and dairy that's going to be phased out over the next, like you said, seven to eight years. But you also know that the UK, in the last four years, the plant-based food industry has doubled i mean if you look at the actual figures it's now gone from something like 560 million to over a billion that people are spending on plant-faced food so the, the private sector Definitely. is is filling that gap i mean I, it's, it's, I think a lot of people will be listening gap. to this wondering how but 125 million when you consider that we're spending a billion on plant-based food already is 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 pretty pointless isn't it well, that, that's the national food strategy. That's definitely advice. That, that's a very, very, I guess, tamed down version of it. Obviously, we want to see much more in, a, in the same ballpark as meat and dairy, which is 1.5 billion. So the, the reason why well, the private sector has to step in is because the government isn't providing but what's, adequate what's funding wrong to with have that? cheap, convenient. It's working. I mean, uh, by 2024, it, 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 it's, it's a waste free... of taxpayers' money. It's not a waste of taxpayers' money because we're buying the food. By 2024, we will be spending 1.1 billion pounds on plant-based foods, which is, of course, you know, not far off the 1.6 billion subsidy, which is also being phased out. And that's an increase from the 2014 market value of 582 million. So in 10 years, the market for plant-based foods here in the UK is doubling and we are making the choice to do that. Now that's still not quick enough. Fundamentally, we're saying we have to reach net zero urgently and take action. And if we're saying over 10 years, we'll slowly phase down from what is currently a 90% meat-based diet for most people in the UK, that is just not quick enough. Slowly phase down. down. In, in 10 years, the industry is going to be worth, in a 10-year period, in just three years' time, the industry is going to be worth over £1.1 billion. Pounds. I mean... You've solved it. You've got what you want. I mean, I'm just so confused. We, we, we definitely haven't got what we want because the government is still investing that much money. There are still no subsidies for alter alternative proteins. So until the government actually sub subsidizes and decides to un invest in alternative proteins, we're going to keep doing this. And in, in terms of scale, yes, maybe the plant-based food industry will be 1.1 billion then. But currently, the meat and dairy industry is in the scale of tens, if not hundreds of billions. So when you still look at that, it's still 100 times smaller. And if we're going to feed 10 billion people by 2050, in a way that doesn't destroy the planet, we have to start transitioning immediately to plant-based foods. But we foods. are. But the thing is, we are. But it's not, but it's not quick enough. <laughs> it's not quick enough. 1.1 billion by two it, and a it, half it, years' time, and that's, yeah, got, scale, that's doubled since 2014. It's, it's still 100 times smaller. If you, if you think of it in scale, 
it's still a hundred. So, what, what is the total value of the meat industry at the moment then? I can't give you uh, a direct number, but I can. I well, can then, how do you know say, that it's significantly smaller? Because I, I know it's in the hundreds of billions, not what not, the, not, what's not, the not, not the single not the single digit. What's the figure? Anyway, the figure is irrelevant. I, I know. How is it's... the figure irrelevant when you are the one who is telling us that the figure is is way too big? Fine. What's the figure? You don't know. I mean, look, uh, I, I, yeah. I, I absolutely get it. I mean, I right. love plant based alternatives. I am one of right. those consumers who is Amazing. listening to what is going on. I am Amazing. one of those consumers that believes we should be paying more for better quality meat rather than factory farm stuff. I'm one of the consumers that's keeping an eye on what DEFRA is doing. And that's why they're phasing out subsidies by 2028. My question to you is why on earth are you doing all of this when the government's already announced what they're doing? Consumers are already spending a fortune on plant-based foods and you don't even know the size of the industry that you're protesting against. Well, well, well that's the problem is the products are more expensive and they shouldn't be. We want plant-based products to be cheaper, more convenient and more accessible than meat and dairy products currently, and they're not. So we want the government, it should be making easier behavioral changes for people to actually pick a plant-based option. And like you said, they're paying a premium, they're paying a fortune, but that, that shouldn't be right. Why should, we be paying, be, why should we be paying more for products that actually work, that are better for the planet? That's completely misaligned in terms of what is good for the, for the public and for the greater so, good. So, so how much is a uh, 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 two plant-based burgers at the moment then what's the average price would you say um if you go for a beyond burger from tesco that's about two patties for about six quid and probably the equivalent of something else or oh, milk milk's a good example it's easily double per liter price of milk of dairy milk versus plant-based milks and time and time again the studies from oxford and cambridge have shown that the emissions and the water and land footprint of these alternatives are on the order of two to five to ten times smaller, depending on what alternative you choose. But as the industry increases, those prices are going to come further down. By the way, two Beyond Meat uh, plant-based patties are actually five pounds. I could buy an entire... Did I say five fifty? Yeah, no, you said six. Up, um, you <laughs> said Beyond Beyond Meat plant-based mints is only three pounds if I buy that at... Tesco as well, which is uh, 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 300 grams, not really much more expensive than the normal mints that you would buy from Tesco's. But, but fundamentally, m more expensive for a product that is actually better for people's health, better for the planet, and not ins insustainable in the same way. It doesn't make sense. We're essentially, it's like paying subsidies for tobacco. Would we do that anymore? Of course not, because we know it's killing people. So we stop doing that. So why is it not the exact same for meat and dairy? It's, it's causing greenhouse, ma greenhouse gas emissions that will keep kill people in the UK and around the world. And that's what we need to focus on. So you're protesting because Beyond Meat patties are a bit more expensive than the alternative. Thanks for really simplifying my point. We're protesting because the government is propping up an unsustainable and unprofitable industry rather than supporting a transition to a plant-based food system, which is one that we need to urgently av avoid climate chaos and ecological breakdown. That's I mean, a garden gourmet, gourmet plant-based burger uh, for two of those, which is the Tesco brand, is two pounds for two of those. And if you buy some beef burgers, that they, they are uh, four finest beef burgers are three pounds. Four original look, beef burgers from Tesco is one pound eighty, whereas the gourmet based burger you get two of them is three pounds so you know you're looking at about a pound difference in price look yeah great so you, you're you, hanging you off the some, building you, for a you pound can find some cherry pick you can find some cherry i'm not examples. cherry picking you're <laughs> you're quoting at me the most expensive premium plant-based uh, burgers which are beyond meat i'm telling you and perhaps you're not aware of this that there is green cuisine by bird's eye there is tesco's own brand they are all plant-based burgers which are significantly cheaper than the ones you claim to be protesting about it still doesn't get past the point i'll say it one more time that the government is currently giving 1.5 billion pounds to meat and dairy and a big total of zero for plant based alternatives. But you There's know no that they have. Okay, we're going around in circles. But you know that they have announced <laughs> we'll around in circles. that by 2027, that will. I think it's actually earlier than 2027, actually. Between 2021 and 2024, payments are being gradually reduced. So by 2024, you're going to have that subsidy gone, other than to pay farmers 
to maintain their land in an ecologically friendly way. And also the plant based um, industry will be worth over a billion pounds. So you're protesting for something that's already been decided, that's already happening. And what you're asking for as much as an alternative is already out there. Again, uh, we are going around in circles. Do you not listen to what I'm saying? Okay. Yes, that, that, is, that number is going down, still not going to zero and still not going fast enough, I might add. But again, there is still no promise of funding for climate alternatives. That you, there's, there's zero. Okay. And, and you're not answering my question. And... Why do you need funding for plant-based alternatives when they're already around the same price as the meat-based ones? Because they should and they could be cheaper. And we, we need the research and development to actually get these products to scale to market so they can so people and it's more accessible. Right. And people you don't feel find that... them in supermarkets around the country rather than just in your select few supermarkets you might select find. few supermarkets. It's Tesco. It's the biggest supermarket in the UK. You don't feel that perhaps Tesco or Bird's Eye are actually in a good position for research and development themselves. Not not to the scale we need. Look, we need to feed. You don't feel 17... like Tesco is on the scale of food production that you need. We need to feed 70 million people in the UK and about 10 billion people globally, right? Well, well I would say Tesco's <laughs> probably a pretty good place to start. I mean, I'm no expert on supermarkets, but Tesco and Bird's Eye, I'd say, are pretty good places to start when it comes to research and development of plant-based foods, which is what they're doing, and that's why they're selling them. But the scale of money available is still pales in comparison to government funding. Look, 1.5 billion. Tesco is not going to spend 1.5 billion pounds in R&D for alternative proteins. But the government can do that, and it should do that. So it's like, as a duty to its citizens to protect the planet and to not kill billions of animals in the meantime and instead fund, fund greater research into alternative proteins. All right. When did you last eat meat, by the way, James? Um, is, it, is it that relevant? But yes. about, about, about six years ago, when, when I realized actually as, as a way that I can live that is more planetary, but more planet friendly and more stable. So what do you eat on a typical animals? day then? So you don't eat so, so you don't eat meat. Do you eat any animal products or are you vegan? No, I don't eat any any animal products. So what do you eat in a typical day then? Um, wow, well, this is really going off piece. This interview. No, it's um, not. Um, you, how is that <laughs> off piece? You're protesting the fact that people are eating too many meat based products, no, and no, that so... you are no, you know about this stuff. So don't you want to educate people about what else they could be eating? So uh, as Animal Rebellion, we focus on system change. So we don't actually want individuals. Well, we're not trying to pres pressure individuals to change their diet. We want the government to make these products more. I'm sorry. Like I said, more, you're not more pushing cheap. individuals to change their diet. Well, then what's the point of what you're doing? is to get large institutions like government and corporations to act. So we think ultimately they control so much of our resources. They yeah. will steer the market in a way. Yes. Who buys <laughs> from large institutions and corporations, though? Yes, and, and the signal is strong from consumers. Now the government has to so respond. So who is going to have to change their behaviour? Yes, but... Consumers. It, it, yes, so therefore, it, why aren't that, you asking for consumers to change their behaviour in order to make the industry that you want even bigger? Because we, as I think, government investment to make these things cheaper, more accessible, and more tasty ultimately will drive that consumer demand. So you do want people us. to change their behaviour then, because you want the consumer demand to change. But we, we, want, we want the government and institutions to lead this transition. So right. it's, it's, it's a slightly different thing. We want the we want these institutions who have the resources and capital yeah. to actually drive this innovation to bring out these great products, and then the, and then the market will naturally follow rather than shaming and blaming people, which we don't want to do. Because currently the alternatives no, but aren't good enough. someone might be listening to this thinking, okay, well, what can I eat instead? Which is why I'm asking you what you eat in a typical day. Oh, plant-based alternatives. There, Which are? A, ple a, a plethora of, of things. Like um, what? God, okay. Well, I if you go for your plant-based milks, rather than choosing cow's milk, you can go for loads of uh, healthy alternatives. So what, what kind? Plant-based milks. Oats is an exa easy example grown yeah. in the UK. Oat is great. I think that that's that my, my preferred one, the multiple preferred one. So that that's one example. Um, sorry, someone is screaming from below saying thank you. Yeah. Um, well, lunch, what would you have at lunch after you and your breakfast? What do you have at breakfast? So you don't have eggs then? No, no. Um, just porridge. Uh, what, what more do you want? I think it's, uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, again, oats grown in the UK. Good yep. for you. No brainer. Lunch? I don't know, lunch, lunch, dinner, all similar things. Uh, legumes, beans, pulses. So replacing uh, the, the unnecessary meat and dairy protein with yep. healthier and they're, uh, they're all proteins, protein. are they? Um, well, things like beans and legumes. Yeah. Uh, yes, they are. Uh, and then obviously with what people normally eat, veg and rice and whatnot. So it's a fairly fairly normal thing. It's not exactly rocket science or innovative. Yeah. But 
the point is the tin of lentils just, in Sainsbury's 55p. Great. Just so you know. Yeah, that, that, that's, an, that's that's great. Right. But it sounds like you've got uh, quite a, a good selection there of plant-based proteins then to choose from. Well, the, the problem is that most people, uh, they, they, they they like certain foods, right? They like yeah. they like burgers, they like steaks, they like, yeah. they like the milk. They Which like is the why cheese. you can buy them for two pounds in, in Tesco's. Uh, okay, yeah. listen, James, nice to talk to you. Thank you. That's James Osden from Animal Rebellion.